Welcome to this quick start for V-Ray for Modo tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be taking a closer look at V-Ray lights and also at some of the V-Ray textures that can be applied to these lights. I've taken my headphone scene and I've modified it to create a typical studio shot setup. And what I'd like to do next is to create a little bit more interest and variety in the lighting. And in order to do this, I'm going to texture my area lights using some V-Ray textures. So before proceeding any further, I'm going to quickly add a second camera to the scene and I'm going to make this my render camera. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can basically point the camera directly at the area light to see the changes that I'm making to the light in V-Ray RT. Next, I'll set my viewport to look through this camera and I'll just navigate until I can see my area light directly. Bear with me for one second while I point my camera at the light. And next I'm going to select both of my area lights and I'm going to make sure they're visible to camera and visible to reflection rays. And having done that, I'm going to launch V-Ray RT just to make sure that I can actually see the area lights. And as you can see, there they are. But as you can see, we're actually looking through the back of this particular area light and it's obstructing our view. So I'm going to select it on its own and uncheck visible to camera. And now when I relaunch V-Ray RT, we've got an unobstructed view of this main area light here. Next, I'm going to scroll down to the lights area in the shader tree and I'm going to select the uh, main light that I'm pointing at in V-Ray RT and I'm going to add a V-Ray softbox texture to it. The V-Ray softbox texture is basically a procedural texture which you can apply to your lights which will give some softbox like effects and this is useful in order to create more interesting reflections on your objects. Now the default settings don't actually produce anything at all if I launch V-Ray RT all we're going to see at the moment is basically a white area light. So I need to actually enable some of these options in order for the softbox like effects to appear. So I'm going to start by applying the spots, which basically is going to make the middle of the softbox brighter than the edges. And it's very subtle, but you can see it at the moment. And I'm also going to enable some of the gradient options, which are found down here. So I'm going to add a radial vignette and at the moment you're not going to see anything in order for the radial vignette to appear in the render. I'm going to need to actually edit the um, gradient. So what I need to do is middle click at 100% to add a new key and then simply drag the slider to make that part, the outer part of the softbox black and you can see we've got a uh, radial vignette here. Let me just undo that and make sure I've got all three of the keys selected and I can now edit this. Can also maybe make this color slightly less dark, maybe just a, a little bit grayer like so. I'm also going to add a frame vignette and once again I'm going to edit that gradient by middle clicking around 100% and turning the color to black and you can see this is a slightly different kind of effect. So you can see that by applying these procedural textures to my lights I'm going to have reflections that are more realistic and more interesting to look at. Now I can take this a step further by also applying a grid light texture on top of my softbox texture. So I'm going to go to add layer and I'm going to go to V-Ray textures Burkon and add a Burkon tile texture. And once again, I'm going to launch V-Ray RT to have a look at the results. So we can see at the moment the uh, scale of the grid is much too small. So I'm going to change the size and I'm going to multiply it by 5. And that seems much closer to the size of grid that I would want on my area light. Now a nice thing about this Burkon tile texture as you can see is that you can have a lot of variety within the patterns. 
However, in this case, I would like to simplify it just a little bit. So I'm going to go down to the pattern section here and I'm going to uh, just simplify it to 0, 1, 1. And I'm also going to make the width and the height of the tiles match. So I'm going to set them both to 4. And having done that, I'm going to relaunch V-Ray RT to have a look at the results. And this is a much simpler grid, but it appeals to me a lot more. So now all I need to do is change the blending mode from normal to uh, multiply and we'll see that both the grid and the softbox are being applied to the light together. So now that I've textured my area light, I want to duplicate these textures into the other area light. So I'm going to select both of the textures and I'm going to duplicate them and drag them into the other area light. And then I'm going to scroll back up to the render item and reset the camera to the original camera that I was using in the scene. And having done that, I'm going to relaunch V-Ray RT to have a look at the results. So as you can see, the addition of these procedural textures to our area lights is creating much more interesting reflections in the whole scene. We've got the grid and there's also a visible fall off in the strength of the reflection as a result of using this softbox procedural. However, the addition of these textures has also visibly dimmed the lighting in the scene. So what I'm going to do is to select the area light which is directly above the headphones and I'm going to double its strength from 4 to 8 and hopefully that should create much more balanced and pleasing lighting. And with that done, I'm going to launch a production render of the scene so that we can compare the results before and after the addition of these procedural textures. So here is the completed render, and if I open the V-Ray buffer frame history, we can compare it with our original render. And you can see that by adding these procedural textures to the area lights, we've created much more interesting lighting in our scene. The original lighting was very flat and uninteresting, whereas the new lighting has got much more depth and interest to it. And of course, the big payoff you get from adding these kinds of procedural textures to actual lights as opposed to luminous polygons is that you still get all the benefits of using direct lighting, multiple important sampling, and generally faster renders. I hope that you found this quick start tutorial useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.